she's revealed that she's joined the Dignitas Clinic in Switzerland. Um, that's a clinic that provides doctor-supervised assisted dying. That's because she's currently undergoing treatment for stage four lung cancer. My family say it's my decision and my choice. I explained to them that actually I don't want their last memories of me to be painful because if you watch someone you love having a bad death, that memory obliterates all the happy times. And I don't want that to happen. It's really brave of her to talk so honestly about it, isn't it, Colleen? I mean, mm. what, what do you make of what she said? Um, <clears throat> I'm all for assisted dying because I think it's a personal choice and if that's what you want to do then you should be allowed to do it, it shouldn't be against the law. I think it's kind of easy to say before you've reached that, oh yes I would want that mm. or I'm doing that for my family because sometimes your family might not want you to do that. We all don't want to be a burden on our family but we all know when we've had family members of which I have had many over the years who have sadly passed away or gone through a terrible illness, I've never, ever thought these are a burden mm. on me. You know, I've always wanted to be there for them until the end, and it is hard. Um, having said that, then, when they do pass, it's almost a relief from everyone because you do go, well, they're out of pain, you know, so initially it takes that awful, awful sense yeah. of loss away initially. However, I've always said, oh, yeah, I would, you know, if I knew I was going to have a really end painful death, I would, I would want to go, yeah. you know, to Switzerland or whatever. But I watched a documentary on it and it's really not that straightforward and it's really, you know, I... I always thought... Oh, I thought I was going there. <laughs> I always thought it was, uh, like, when you take your dog to the vet and it's mm. an injection and you go to sleep, but yes, it wasn't it's like not that. that. It's it not, because like you that. have to have control yeah. over the way in which it, it happens. But it's interesting you talk about animals, actually, because I know that you, you had to um, let go of your dog not that long ago, and that's not an easy decision to make either, is it? No, it's not. I mean, obviously, it's nothing like um, a human being, but it, it was... It, in a way, if assisted dying comes in, it's almost like the same thing, where he was in such terrible pain, he couldn't walk, I had to lift him to go out to the loo in, mm. the, in the garden. And, and so I made the decision for him, not for me, um, because obviously we would like to have kept him going. Um, but with, obviously with a human like Esther, you know, Esther's whip smart, um, still, you know, completely compass mentis in her 80s, and she's clearly come to this decision herself. And I do think, you know, it is when it's based on what when you could be in pain and you don't want to be mm. in pain and your family is just going to watch you rot away, basically. Yeah. You want to save them from that and you want to save yourself from mm. that. Um, but I do think if we do end up bringing assisted dying in in this country, there has to be a very strict process that you have to go through, including a panel of independent sort of, say, doctors where you have to justify it and have to be of yeah. sound mind because, you know, it would get abused otherwise. Yeah. There would be people going, well, what, we don't want you around anymore, you know, mm. get off and whatever. So that's, that needs yeah. to be filtered out. Uh, I mean, in terms... <laughs> yeah. In terms of the law, the assisted dying bill has been voted for three times in the House of Commons. The last was this year, actually. Um, and uh, in this year, they held their first evidence session um, and they'll report back at the end of this year or the start of next year. But, in, but I think it's 84% of the British public, according to the last survey, 84% um, back calls mm. for assisted dying. Do, do you think that over time our opinions have changed slightly, maybe because of technology and medical, and just having more control after over our own lives? I think more so than ever, we've come through such difficult times recently, and it's definitely at the forefront of many people's minds. And you want to honour people in death as much as you do in life. You know, when we find out that somebody's having a baby or there's a, there's a new... Uh, there's a delivery, everybody, you know, can celebrate that. And I would like to be able myself to make the switch to remind, you know, that w when you die, you're also still celebrating a life. Mm -hmm. And I think so many people understandably are frightened of dying and frightened of death and that loss, myself included. I, d I don't want to lose my loved ones, but I want to give them that dignity. I completely yeah. agree with what you said, mm. Colleen. It, you don't want to be a burden. I most certainly don't want to be a burden to my children. Um, I've got a <laughs> sister who lives in Australia and I would, the thought of her having to leave her family to come and check that I'm OK, that would, that would be awful. Would you, would, you, would you be able to do it for another 
family member. Now, this is where this is where I would need those protocols mm. to then step in because I'm not brave enough to press a button for a family member because it's your family well, member. Make that decision for, yeah, so yeah. it's one thing saying, look for myself, I don't want to burden you. But I think what you really are dealing with life and death here, and that's why we it has to go through every protocol. Every yeah. I, mean, I, may, I may have got this wrong, but I think the bill that's going through at the minute is very much the instigation has to come from the person themselves. Yes. So it's not, yes, it's it's not about no, no. by the rest of the family, but it's often the person. You don't, you've got to a point in your yeah. life or rather towards death that you can't often make that decision if there's Alzheimer's or... Yeah, or there's yeah but then like, you wouldn't be allowed to be allowed to in that situation. Yeah. But then you're but watching I remember, someone really suffering yeah. or hurting. It's, it's difficult because it's a conversation that Prue Leith had with her son in a programme they had on earlier this year where she is very for assisted dying and he's very much against and he said uh, and he's a man of faith and I think sometimes that's where the decision can be difficult because if you are raised within the Christian faith and you live your life according to the Bible making those decisions regarding taking the choice of life away from God that can be very difficult but his argument is we need to improve palliative care here and then that will get rid of the need for assisted dying. But I guess it's a very individual choice, isn't it, Jane? Because if you are someone that doesn't want their family to see you in so much pain and so much suffering, um, do you think it should be your choice to not have them go through that? I think, yeah, I mean, I think there is an argument for improving palliative care, for sure. Um, and nobody wants to see anybody suffer, but still palliative care is, is basically you are drugged up to the yeah, eyeballs to stop... That to stop the pain. So really you are just sort of lying there, but you know, at least you are not in pain. Yeah, but yeah. I, I just think, you know, I think Esther, Esther's obviously a very niche part of this because she's of a certain age, she has a terminal condition, she still has, you know, her mind in full tact so she can make the decision herself. She has a supportive yeah. family. Um, and, and in that situation, I don't have any issue with it at all, but obviously yeah. it's very complex. It's matter, very complex. Isn't it? <laughs> um, and we do 